someone's killing all the hot girls at a college. Hey, we've never heard that before. Hey everybody, welcome back to Dr. Movie. And this episode, I'm not in my car. I'm actually at home, uh, kind of under the weather, but I thought I'd go ahead and crank this one out. But I'm going to talk about my absolute favorite Giallo movie. And matter of fact, I think it's possibly the best Giallo movie. And if you don't know what that means, I think it's the best uh, murder mystery movie for you guys that don't know what Giallo means. So Giallo is a set of yellow books that murder mysteries were written in in Italy. And they take these stories and turn them into uh, f more fleshed out stories and then movies. And that's kind of where this comes from. And I just absolutely love this movie. Um, Sergio Martino. So let's talk about Sergio for a minute. He's the director here. Um, has made several movies of the same genre here. Uh, matter of fact, the four movies before this one were all very big staples of the giallo uh, genre. And... This one, I think, is just, uh, I don't know, even probably he said, I don't know if I can top this one. So that's kind of where he stopped. And uh, wow, a lot of people, I even saw where my buddy Dave Z brought it up because I was showing that, you know, I was going to cover this movie. But he called it the first real slasher, which is very true. Uh, everything else was more of a derivative of, uh, like I said, murder mystery, right? So, So when I say that, for you that are trying to put your head around, get your head around what this really means, uh, Scream is a giallo. Uh, it's part slasher, part giallo, right? Because nobody knows who's doing it, and you're never right at the end, right? That's kind of the whole concept, right? Uh, to keep you entertained and trying to figure out what's going on. That's exactly what this is. Now, the thing about Sergio is, He's a brilliant director. I love the way he sets up shots for this. But here's the thing about Sergio. He's a little bit of a sleazeball. Uh, he likes to uh, use the ladies, right? So he's got that Russ Meyer thing as well. Uh, but it's amazing that somebody can make these movies that have this touch of sleaze to them, but they're still so brilliant and beautiful at the same time. So that's what I want to talk about. Again, I just absolutely love this movie. My my goal is, if you have never watched this movie, is to convince you to go check it out. And uh, if you have seen it before, I still want you to check it out again. That's kind of the whole idea. So, like I said earlier, these girls are being killed at a campus. And it's all in the newspapers. Nobody's really knowing what's going on. But what happens is, whoever is doing this is pretty much strangling them with a red and black handkerchief. And then he proceeds to poke their eyes out and stab them with the knife. So that's like his trademark of what he's doing here. Uh, to get things rolling, when this movie starts off, you get a scene of, well, let's just say it. It's pretty much an orgy going on. Uh, there's several hot ladies in here. And you assume a guy? Right? You never see who. But you also notice that while they are doing all this, there's a hidden camera that's taking pit photos <clears throat> while all this is going on. So that's kind of your setup for, you know, they like to throw you the curveball of what the heck is going on here. And usually the opening scene is totally left out of the movie till the very end, and then they tie it in and it makes sense, right? It's very Scooby Doo, right? When I think of Giallos, I think of Scooby-Doo, where you find out everything. You don't know what's going on through the majority of the show, but the last two minutes of the show is when you find out everything is going on, right? So that's kind of the cool thing about this. So you're always guessing what's happening. There's some iconic scenes in this. Again, um, it's one thing to watch this and enjoy the movie. It's another thing to sit back and just think about these shots that he's put together because they're not easy shots. Uh, there's some shots from inside a car and stuff that only somebody with, you know, a real vision can put this stuff together. <clears throat> and 
it's pretty miraculous. Um, and again, the the ladies in this movie, <clears throat> excuse me, are uh, yeah, they're smoking hot. I mean, they're all beautiful ladies in this movie, and uh, and you've got Susie Kendall in here, who's kind of I don't want to say royalty, but she was known for being in an Argento film early on. Matter of fact, his his first Giallo, she was in it. Or no, it was the second one. So, anyways, one of those. <laughs> I have to relook on that. I, yeah, I think it's the second one. But uh, so she was well known at the time for being in Argento stuff. Uh, the rest, the rest, not really known for a lot. Maybe some skin flicks for some of them. They're not afraid to to, to show what they got, and that happens a lot in this movie. But what's going on is they're all classmates together. They're all hanging out. And somebody starts knocking off some of their friends. And one girl that's, I guess you'd say, the most popular of the group gets a phone call from the killer saying that she was going to die and she was next. So she gets all freaked out. And her and her friends all load up and they go out to her uncle's house out in the country. Now, the uncle (laughs) is kind of a sleazeball as well. So... Uh, they're living in town with their uncle, but the uncle owns this property out in the country. So the girls all load up, go out there to try to get away from everything until everything cools down. Um, the beautiful thing about this movie is it can be anybody. And that's what's so brilliant about this. Uh, not an unusual tact, right? This this happens quite a bit, but uh, they really do a good job of making you question everybody. From the, uh, you know, there's a professor, there's the uncle, there's some dude driving around in a car, there's a couple of dudes on some motorcycles, there's the guy that's the the vending guy that's a sleaze ball that's hanging out in front of the college selling stuff. It could be any of these people. Could be a girl. Could be anybody. And again, that's the beauty of this film. Um, the whole setup towards the end. It's just absolutely brilliant. Uh, I can't say enough about the other kill scenes in this. They're all brilliant, well shot. Uh, and like Dave Z said, uh, this is this is the, the first slasher flick where it's a masked person hunting people down. So even down to the classic Giallo wearing the black gloves so you can't tell by the hands of who it is. Uh, so there's a lot of factors that tie into this that make this just awesome. But, uh, like I said, kill scenes are fantastic. Uh, maybe a little dated now cause it is 1973, but still I could see where this kind of shook things up for sure. Um, and the reason this is called torso, <laughs> which is, you know, a brutal name, right? It kind of stands out in your head of, mm, I don't know, that sounds pretty rough. Uh, again, as simplistic as the story is, there's uh, some super suspense in this movie. Is it a scary movie? Uh, I don't know if I would classify it as really scary at all. Uh, for somebody that's not a horror watcher, it might be. But it is a straight-up suspense movie where you're trying to figure out what's going on. And it's got buttloads <laughs> of suspense. Um, it all comes down to... The killer finds out where they're staying out in the country, and they're out there all alone. And this town's like backwards. <laughs> all the the guys that come out there when the girls show up and they're loading up a tractor and hauling all their stuff up. I mean, they're all just you know going gaga over all all the ladies there. It's like they've never seen them before because yeah, they do show some of the local ladies there, and you know they're bigger than the dudes. You know, so uh, they've never seen anything like these. Hot college chicks, right? And the thing is, is they know they're hot too. So that kind of pays plays into it as well. But uh, while they're up here, uh, Susie Kendall, which I, I guess you could say is the main character, um, she's obviously a bit nicer than the rest. She keeps her nose a little cleaner than the rest. Uh, and then you got the girl that I said got the threat. And then you got two other girls that are a lesbian couple, right? Which was, again, 73. Don't know if you really saw that much in movies back then. Could be wrong. Uh, but they really panned it off as 
no big deal, which I thought was pretty cool, you know. And uh, what happens is Susie ends up hurting herself, breaking her ankle. She's in a lot of pain. There's no doctor. So they just kind of have to wait it out until the doctor can come out there, which is a, you know, a long way or whatever. She lays down, goes to bed, and while she's asleep with heavy medication, all the other girls get knocked off. And in order to get rid of the body so nobody notices them, uh, our killer comes in with a, a hacksaw and cuts the bodies up into pieces, puts them in bags, and hauls them off. Now, all this is very suspenseful, like I said. It's done so well. But at the same time, we get Susie waking up and wanting to know where everybody is. She comes downstairs, and she's just hobbling. She can't get around very well. And while she's down there, she sees the dead bodies. And then all of a sudden, she hears the doorknob start turning. So the killer's coming back, and she tries to hide, but she can't get around very well. So this is all paced so incredibly well. Um, she's hiding, and but the problem is, is where she's hiding, she can see everything that's going on. So you kind of get this thing of her watching, you know, our killer slice and dice here with a hacksaw. And it's one of those things where, can she look away? She don't need to watch what she's seeing, but she can't help but watch either, I guess because it's just so unbelievable. Um, and I'm not going to go much further than that because there's some other twists and turns that happen here. And like I said, you get a reveal of what the backstory is, why this is all happening. I will say, in most cases with the Giallo films, whatever drives our killer to these levels of being able to do this kind of stuff is usually some kind of um, mental disturbance that happened when they were young, which, you know, if you think about serial killers and stuff, very true, right? So uh, you get a backstory of what all happened and why this person is thinking like they are, why they're so disturbed. But yeah, they can no longer distinguish between right and wrong. And, uh, that kind of is, is the, the backbone of everything happening here. Uh, again, I, I can't say this enough. I mean, there's the, you can go check out all of his other movies, you know, Case of Scorpion's Tale, uh, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have a Key. I mean, they all got names that are a mile long. They're all stupendous, fantastic. But to me, Torso, even with the Argento stuff, I, I love Torso. Probably more than anything. It's usually a toss-up between Deep Red and Torso. And they're so different movies. Uh, Deep Red is so stylistic. Way ahead of its time. But, but in a weird way, I think this one is too. I think this one really, uh, back to Dave Z's talking about it, it, it really set a uh, precipice of what, what is to come, right? Uh, Town That Dreaded Sundown, Halloween... And the list goes on and on, right? You were right here at the cusp of Texas Chainsaw, too. So, not Texas Chainsaw 2, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So, this movie is important. Now, I will say, at the same time, for you get too excited, they are an acquired taste, because they are Italian. Uh, you'll get some overdubs that are not fantastic. There, there's nothing worse than trying to watch a movie, and they're trying to make dialogue in English to make sense to, you know, our civilization when they don't talk the same way. So there's lines that probably don't make the same sense, but that's all right. They're, they're trying to make it acceptable. And, uh, but you're always going to get overdubbed because you got a lot of Italian actors in this that have very heavy accents or can't even speak English. So you get some overdubs like that, but bang for the buck. Again, I, I can't recommend this movie enough. It is so solid so great that uh, I just recommend it to everybody that's a horror fan of any kind. So there you go. That's my recommendation. I hope you enjoy it. Hope you check it out. Go look it up. It's not on Tubi. I'll give you that. It's not on there. You kind of have to search for this one. But uh, it is well worth the search. All right, folks. That's it for me. We will see you next time right here on Dr. Movie. Check you later.